the Lord God Almighty. He is holy, holy, holy. Who was and who is and who is to come. The eternal God. For he has given us this new day to live for him and exalt his name. Let us worship him and enjoy his presence through this day. And though, so before we begin our day's activities, let us sit just a very few minutes in the presence of God at the feet of Christ and listen to the voice of the Spirit through his word. We shall continue the study on Cornelius the Centurion. In Acts chapter 10, let us visit the household or the house of Cornelius the Centurion, along with Peter and his companions from Joppa. Peter met a house full of eager people waiting for him. Cornelius gathered all his household. It was a distinguished gathering of a people ready and willing to listen to what Peter had to share with them. Peter had to simply tell them what to do and they were wholeheartedly ready to do what Peter tells them to do. Those who gathered at Cornelius' house were so ready and prepared to receive and believe the message that uh, Peter brought with him, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, in fact, the way they responded shows they already were believed by faith, whatever Peter would say. And they simply knew that whatever Peter will share, will be the oracle of God. And they already were willing to believe it, accept it, and surrender themselves to the word of God. And those who ask for more information, there are people who, who, whose hearts are not very sincere. So they will have all kinds of questions, including... We need more time to think about all this. You know what? These people who make excuses what they really are, they are not sincere in their hearts. Uh, there is no sincerity. They are not sincere in seeking God. And as Peter began to explain the gospel of Christ, the message, they were so prepared for what Peter was sharing. And while he was sharing, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as he fell upon the waiting disciples on the day of Pentecost. See, that shows how willing and prepared they were to believe. In fact, they already believed. They have decided and determined whatever Peter would say, it will be God's message and so we must believe and uh, accept it. And uh, the Holy Spirit has no hesitation in coming readily upon them. And he came. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now three things are very obvious and we need to observe them from this incident. Number one, Cornelius' prayers and seeking heart were proofs of his sincerity. God considers our prayers and our prayers as sacrifices, ascending to him, reminding him of our perseverance in calling on him. And uh, willing to believe and by faith. And they were ready to devote themselves 
to the Lord and surrender themselves to God, the, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, if you read Psalm number 141, verse 2, and also read uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, you will have a supporting verses to this attitude. And our prayers are always ascending to God. And when he hears our prayers, he is reminded that our perseverance in calling on his name shows their faith and devotion they are willing to give unto God. And the second thing we notice is this. The angel of the Lord told him what to do. Send men and bring Peter from Joppa. Notice, the Lord knows you. He knows your name. He knows where you live. And that means he knows your address to the minutest detail. And he knows the people surrounding you or with whom you are staying. He knows it all. And all you need to do is to open your hearts and be sincere. And then he is ready to meet your greatest spiritual need. And in fact, he knows you more than you know yourself. And that is the second thing that we see in this. He knew Peter. He knew with whom he was staying. He knew the address. And he had no difficulty in directing Cornelius and give them how to find this man, Peter. And the third thing we can notice is whatever Peter would say would be God's message. That's what Cornelius and his people believed. Cornelius' prayers and good uh, deeds were never lost. They were all before God. Now ready to be answered and be rewarded. Remember Lazarus and his two sisters Mary and Martha. One day news came to Jesus. Jesus, Lazarus is sick, and without you, he would not make it. And then they waited. Four days passed, but Jesus didn't come. And what happened? They waited, waited. And then suddenly somebody shouted, he would be soon here. He is on his way. Jesus is coming. And he came. And both Mary and Martha went to meet him. And both of them said the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, Lazarus would have been alive even today. We send the message, Master. Why didn't you come? And you are late. And Jesus said, Martha and Mary, show me the grave. And roll back the stone. And Martha and Mary said, Master, we don't understand. It is four days past. The body is already decaying. There is a bad odor coming out if you open. And Jesus said, Martha, didn't I say that if you believe, you shall see the glory of God? And they rolled back the, uh, back the stone. And Jesus stood there and with a loud voice called out, Lazarus, come forth. And somebody shouted, he is alive. He is coming out. And Lazarus came out alive. Isn't that wonderful? 
that though Jesus was four days late, the four days late was not late. Our ways are not his ways. And his ways are not my ways. Let him be late four days. Let him be late ten days. Let him be late two years. But when he comes, he will still be on time. In fact, the more delay he takes, he, 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 he causes, he, he makes, the greater the miracle will be. That is the lesson. He was four days late, and yet for him that four days was no late, he was right on time. The only difference was they experienced a greater, more glorious miracle. And therefore, don't be discouraged. Delays are not denials. He's, he's silent, and yet in his silence he's preparing for a greater miracle. Trust him. Trust him. That's the message. Don't be afraid. That's what he always says. Hallelujah. And let us realize this truth that God will never be late. He will come out right on time. And, uh, and this, this, this morning, as we meditate on this, here is the message. Cornelius, a devout man, a godly fear, God honored him, and the Spirit of God came upon those waiting crowd inside his house, his entire household. There was a great revival in that family, all because Peter was willing to take the step and though it was forbidden for Jews to visit a Gentile home, he obeyed God. Will you be obedient to God? Somebody is waiting for your arrival. Will you be available to the Holy Spirit who will lead you? So surrender yourself to him. For God is ready to give you a harvest of soul. That is the message. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to move upon your heart and you will change all your, you get rid of all your reservations and fears and anxieties and you will take the step of faith and in obedience step out and meet somebody who needs you. And re remember, the gospel cannot be preached to by angels this time. That privilege is given to the church, to you and to me. Let us not miss it. Offer yourself to him. God bless you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you grace and wisdom and above all courage to release yourself and make yourselves available to the Holy Spirit. Let him take you wherever he wants. Let him use you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. This is a great day. Live for God. Rejoice in him. And enjoy this day. Have a good day. Amen.